Look at all those cameras over there. Can you show the crowd? You know? Can you show this crowd? They never talk about our crowd. And in reverse, they never talk about Sleepy Joe's crowd either. It's about 12, 12 people just showed up, 12. Look at this crowd. Maybe you could take those cameras and just show over there and over there. This is great. Hello, Pennsylvania. Hello, Pennsylvania. We love Pennsylvania. Great education. And also, hello, Reading. We know it well. We know it well. Three days from now, we are going to win the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we are going to win four more great years in the White House. I will tell you, they're getting a little nervous back there, you know, the fake news, because Florida is looking very strong. Florida, and this is not suppression polls. These are like, you know, voters are coming in. Florida is looking very good. North Carolina is looking very good. Ohio is looking beyond good. Ohio. You ever hear you can't win unless you win the great state of Ohio? Did you ever hear that? Well, Ohio is uh, looking real good. They're all looking good. You know what's looking good? Pennsylvania's looking good. Real good. That great red wave is going to be very beautiful to watch. We're looking good. And if we win Pennsylvania, it's over. It's over. It's over. But be careful. You got big tech. You have the Democrats, and they play dirty. You have the rhinos. The rhinos are not good people. You got them all, but uh, we're here, and you have your Second Amendment, you have your tax cuts, you have your regulation cuts, you have your fracking, you have your fracking. Uh, how about Joe? He goes for a year. There will be no fracking. There will be no, I tell you, there will be no fracking. He comes to Pennsylvania, listen, we have a million jobs for fracking. We like $2 gasoline, you know, it's nice, isn't it? We got a lot of things in front. Well, in that case, let me just change my. And he never even gets asked about it by the fake news. Can you believe it? With your support, we will continue to bring back your jobs, cut your taxes, cut your regulations, and ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful term, made in the USA. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. You see, it's already going. You saw what happened. You saw those numbers come out. You have to look very closely. A man got on television yesterday, said, this is probably the greatest economic day in the history of our country. And the papers barely even put it in. It's called suppression. Suppression. Joe Biden will shut down your economy. Well, you're already shut down in Pennsylvania. Hey, Governor, you got to open up you got to open up the state, Governor. Got to open it up. And don't cheat in the ballots, Governor. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. We're going to win. We're going to win. The only way we can lose this state, and the numbers are in. You see what's going on, right? Somebody's going to play games, and they just got an extension. What's the extension all about? Wouldn't you like to hear, November 3rd, we win, we lose. We win, we lose, whatever. November 3rd, now you have more time, more time. Well, what's going on? That was a very disappointing opinion, but I've had many disappointing opinions from the Supreme Court, I will tell you. Many, many disappointing opinions from the Supreme Court. They talk about, we control the Supreme Court, we don't control the Supreme Court. That was a terrible decision. Joe Biden will shut down your economy, wipe out your factories, and shut down your state, ship your jobs to China, raise your taxes, Four trillion dollars, the biggest tax increase, the biggest tax increase in the history of our country. And I gave you the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. He'll eliminate your private health care. 180 million people have the best health care. They work so hard and they negotiated with many great companies and have the best health care. They want to knock it out. They want you to live on socialized medicine. I don't think you'll be too happy. <laughs> Darling, I have a cold. Oh, go to the hospital room. You'll wait online for about four days. That'll be nice, right? And send your state into a deep 
and catastrophic depression. And, you know, uh, if you look at the stock market, we've done great. The only headwind in the stock market, you know, it's an election. Things can happen. We're doing great, much better than anyone understands. They so <laughs> they're starting to get very depressed. You talk about a depression. <laughs> they get they're having a hard time. They're having a hard time with it. But you know what? There's a headwind. You know what the headwind is? That there's a possibility if Biden wins, you're going to have a stock market collapse, the likes of which you've never had. You will have a collapse. So that's our headwind. If we win, if we win on Tuesday, or thank you very much, Supreme Court, shortly thereafter, if we win, let me tell you, if we win, you're going to see a stock market that's going to go like a rocket ship. 401ks, your 401ks. Thank you. Boy. This is a very enthusiastic group, isn't it? This doesn't seem like someone who's going to come in second. Do you agree? I don't think so. Did you see Biden and Obama before? They make you think, honk, 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 honk. And actually, most of them are our supporters trying to cause a little havoc, but that's all right. We don't want that. Biden has vowed to abolish the entire U.S. oil industry. No more fracking, no mining, no heating, no clean coal. And gas prices going up at 5 6 and $7 a gallon. So when you pull in with your car, you say, you know, darling, I think we're going to sell this uh, beautiful, this beautiful SUV. Let's get a compact. Remember the compacts? The gas is too expensive. What, what has this guy Biden done? And the bad part is that Biden doesn't have a clue. He's gonzo. We all know it. They just don't want to say it. Biden's plan, I don't think he likes me too much, yet, is an economic death sentence for this great commonwealth. It's a death sentence. He'll eradicate your economy. Kamala Harris, you ever hear of Kamala? You have to pronounce it Kamala. She makes Bernie Sanders look like a strict conservative. Do you know that? No, Bernie's a conservative member compared to her. I mean, how that choice was made. And did our great vice president win that debate easily? That was a win. That was a big win. Mike is doing a great job. The most liberal senator even sponsored the Green New Deal. $100 trillion. You know, it started off at 100 trillion, then 106. Now they have it down to 6 trillion. No, it's not 6 trillion. And by the way, if it was, you couldn't afford it. But you can't afford 100. A vote for Biden and Harris is a vote to ban, and you know this, ban fracking, ban mining, close up your individual plants. They got plants all over the place. I grew up here. They, they have plants all over. When I say grew up, let me be exactly like during college. Because they'll say, he misrepresented, he said he grew up. But he, you know, Biden represents, right? This is my home. This is not his home. They left. They abandoned you. It wasn't his fault. He was nine years old or something. Right? Not his fault. But it's not like, uh, you know, he's a big Pennsylvania guy. No, he's a Delaware guy, and Delaware is a good place. In fact, it's really good. He likes it so much, he never leaves. He never leaves. <laughs> he made the mistake. He came to Pennsylvania three days ago. Because I was here, I was doing three of them, right? Three in Pennsylvania. Hey, I'm devoting a lot of my percentage of time to Pennsylvania, would you think? I must like you. No, we win Pennsylvania. We're going to win Florida. If we win Pennsylvania, it's over. Let's do it. I felt very badly. I felt guilty because if you remember four years ago, we were at 98% of the vote. If I lost every single vote, you know, there were X number of votes left. If I lost every single vote, every vote, every take them all, I still win. They refuse to call it. 
They refused. They wouldn't call it. I said, wait a minute. They have to call it, because I was at 98, not 99, I was at 98. It stood there like for an hour and a half. And I kept saying, that'd be nice, Pennsylvania, that'd be nice. They refused. And then they said, Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. And then they said, Donald Trump has won the state of Michigan. And we won. And then, like, much later, they just refused to give you the credit. So let's turn it around on them, OK? They didn't treat you well. No, I kept waiting. I said, look at Pennsylvania. Why aren't they going to call it? Why? They waited for hours and hours. I said, I'll concede every vote. I'll concede every one, and we win. They wouldn't do that, right? But we won it, and we won it pretty easily. You know, I think we won it pretty easily. And what I've done from the time we won, and what I've done since then, what we've done for this state has been incredible. Or, to be perfectly accurate, for this commonwealth, but what we've done for Pennsylvania has been incredible. You had the best year you've ever had last year, and you're heading to the best year you've ever had, period. And it's going to be this coming year. But Biden would completely destroy Pennsylvania. Vote for me is a vote to remain energy independent. Do you believe it? We can say that. Right? Did you ever think you were going to hear those beautiful words? We're energy independent. Our economy is now growing at the fastest rate ever recorded. That was what was announced yesterday. The only problem is, you know, so a very, very brilliant gentleman called me up. Not a nice man at all. In fact, he's ruthless and vicious. I love that guy with the beard back there. He goes to a number of, thank you. He's so distinguished. He's so distinguished. I see him at so many rallies. I appreciate it. I think he's great. <laughs> he's going four more years. Now nah, he's great. But you know what? He got up and he said, very smart, very successful guy. He said, you know, this could be the biggest announcement in 50 years. 33.1% GDP. That's growth. He said, you know, the last time it broke the record. It's the number one in history, the history of our country, and probably the history of any country, if you want to know the truth. But 33.1%, which is far greater than people were anticipating, anybody. So what happens is that this is the biggest announcement, but you watch. They won't give you any credit. They'll try not to mention it's true. The press is playing it down so much. Just like, for different reasons, they refuse to talk. They refuse to talk about where's Hunter. They refuse to talk about the corruption in Biden's family. We've learned more about the uh, fake news, but, you know, this is not, this is no longer fake news. This is now corrupt news. This is now corrupt news. We've learned a lot. But we had the greatest number we've ever had. <laughs> I thought I heard that from over there. See, I don't participate in this, because look at all the cameras back there. Look at them all. You know what they're going to do? He's trying to incite them. No, I don't have to incite them. They're like intelligent people. They know. They know that when you get thrown out of the military and you have no job for a long time, and then your father becomes vice president, and then you get $183,000, right? $183,000 to sit on a board, probably never went to a board meeting, and supposedly $3 million up front. And then the mayor of Moscow's wife gives you a check for $3.5 million. And then, and then, you go on Air Force Two and you go to a very nice place known as China. <laughs> they should have never, ever done what they did. They should have never done. We just signed a great trade deal, and the ink wasn't dry, and the plague came in. They should have. They could have stopped it. But they go to China. Father and son goes to China, and he walks out with one and a half billion dollars to manage, which is millions of dollars a year. And then he goes to the big play, 10 million a year. You saw that one? He wants 10 million a year. This is a guy who didn't have a job a year before. Goes to China. We want 10 million a year for introductory. In other words, he'll introduce people to his father. And then you see his father, the big guy, the big guy, they call him. He's not a big guy. He's not a big guy. Boom, boom. He's not a big guy. Go.
Do you remember like a year ago, year and a half ago, I said, I'd like to take him to the back of the barn. <laughs> Boom, pew. A slight slap. You don't have to close. You didn't close your fist. Now they say, he's inciting violence. No, no. But when Biden, I thought it was a terrible thing. Remember that? He actually like, I want to take him to the back of the barn. They didn't say anything. If I said that, they'd say, this is a terrible human being, right? It's all right. You know what? In the meantime, we have the White House, right? We have the White House. We have the presidency. We have fracking. We have energy. We have manufacturing that they totally gave up. Remember, you'd need a magic wand. In the past five months, we've created a record 11.4 million American jobs. There's never been that many jobs produced in that short a period of time. While foreign nations are in a free fall, and they are, unfortunately, I feel badly for them, but they are, we are creating the world's greatest economic powerhouse. We are going to be more powerful than ever before. We had to stop. We had it closed. We had we saved two million lives. Remember they, you know, they don't want to ever talk about that. The model was 2.2 million. That's what they said. We saved two million lives. We closed it up. How would you like to be me? I'm sitting there. We have the greatest economy in the history of this country, in the history of the world. We were we were doing so much better than China. I was throwing tariffs on them. They were paying us billion dollars. I gave 28 billion dollars to farmers because they were targeted by China. Iowa and Nebraska, they'll remember, they'll remember. I gave them 28, 28 billion with a B, farmers, farmers and ranchers, because they were targeted by China, because they thought, China thought they could use the farmers to get the deal that they want, because I said, I'm not going to let you rip off the United States. You've done it long enough. For years and years, and I'm not just talking about Obama, I'm talking about other presidents, too. They allowed this to happen. They allowed this to happen. So we gave our farmers 28 billion, that's not bad, all from China. I said, please write a letter, say thank you very much, President Xi. A recent Gallup poll found that 56% of Americans say they are better off today than they were four years ago under. <laughs> think of that. And that story, we're rounding the turn. They hate when I say it. You know, we're coming up with the vaccines, the therapeutics are incredible. Here I am, I mean, you know. I'm sure I would have been here without the therapeutic because, as you can see, I'm in perfect physical shape. And I'm extremely young. So I'm young and I'm a perfect physical specimen. Powerful. Uh, no, so I'm sure I could have beat it without. But something happened when I took that sucker and it was gone. It was gone. I woke up the next morning and I ripped off my shirt. I said, Doctor, let me the hell out of here. And I was campaigning like uh, very sure. Oh, the other side. Were they happy? Oh, were they happy? But you know what? When you're president of the United States, you can't lock yourself into a basement at the White House. <laughs> Got to be president. I meet people, right? I can't lock myself into the basement, and they have a very good basement. I can't lock myself into a beautiful bedroom and stay there for a year and a half. The President of the United States is locked in the most magnificent bedroom on the third floor of the White House <laughs> because we have a pandemic and he, uh, he's afraid to go out. He's your president. No, no, you got to go out. And uh, the doctor came up to me, great doctors. One thing, if you're president, you get good doctors. That's the one thing I can tell you. You get plenty of them, too. They got more doctors. But they came up, sir, you're positive. You just tested positive. I said, doctor, tell me something. For what? Sir, you have the uh, China plague. He didn't say that. He said COVID, sir. COVID. You know, it's got about 24 different names. Most of them should start with the word China, because that's where it came from. Uh, they have a word corona, right? The coronavirus. Well, I said, what is this, a place in Italy? Sounds like a, an island in Italy. Corona. No, I don't want it. It's the China. It's the China virus. That's what it is. But he said, sir, you just tested positive for COVID. I said, yeah, that's not great. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got about four campaign stops to make in the next couple of days because we got to win this. This is the most important election in the history of our country. And then our great first lady tested positive. 
That's, uh, well, at least those rumors that we don't live together turned out to be false. <laughs> she lives in a house someplace in Virginia. No, no, she lives with me, and she tested. I said, that's the only good thing about her testing positive, because, but she's strong and knocked it out. But then they said, you know that. They said, Sir Barron. Now, Barron's my 14-year-old boy who's very tall and strong. He's very strong, right? And Barron, they said, Sir Barron tested positive. I said, huh, that's not good. About 12 minutes later, I said, how's Barron doing? Sir, he shed it. No problem. He's fine. Get back to school, Governor. Tell them they have to get back to school. They gotta get back to school. Those young kids, they have that strong, we feel strong. They have that very strong immune system. How is he? Uh, he's 100%. Baron, uh, was it bad? I don't think I had anything wrong there. That's one of those things, right? That's the way it is. They're young and they're strong and their immune system is good and they should go back to school immediately. Sleepy Joe Biden is a diehard globalist who spent the last 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless foreign wars in countries that most of you have never even heard of before. They're all coming back. The soldiers are all coming back. You know that. It's enough. 19 years. It's enough. 19 years. And they were policemen. They policed areas. but. It's uh, ridiculous what they were doing in this country. Ridiculous. Biden is a Washington vulture who decimated your steel mills, annihilated your coal jobs, clean coal, and supported every disastrous sellout trade deal for over half a century. I mean, I know. It's the reason why I'm president. The real thing that bothered me more than anything else, I thought the wars were crazy. I thought so much was bad. But I, I saw these trade deals we were making with countries both ally and foe, and our allies in many ways treated us worse than the foe, okay? We were treated horribly on trade, and we were treated horribly on the military. We had to pay for their military. By the way, those days have ended very substantially, you know, very, very substantially. Biden was a cheerleader for NAFTA, one of the worst trade deals ever made, maybe the worst, and China's entry into the World Trade Organization. That's where China was flatlined for years and years, and then they went up like a rocket ship. You know, they're considered a developing nation. As a developing nation, they get a much better deal than we do. I said, China's not a developing nation, or you can let them be, then we're a developing nation also. When you think of it, we are a developing nation. And then we won seven and a half billion dollars recently. We hadn't won anything because the judges within the world trade, the judges treated us with disrespect. But with me, they respect it because I'll say, we'll pull the hell out of there. We'll pull out. And we won seven and a half billion dollars. All of a sudden, we're winning cases. I wish our Supreme Court treated us as well, frankly. That was some decision that was made, right? Let's not. Let's not listen to the decision, this most important election in the history of our country, November 3rd. Let's not wait November 3rd. Let's extend the date. Let's give people more time to put in ballots, right? Why can't they put their ballots in earlier so you have plenty of time and so we can have a decision on November 3rd, the evening of November 3rd? And you know what's going to happen? Especially with Pennsylvania. Man was on television yesterday. We allow five points for cheating, he said, in Pennsylvania, right? Think of that. Uh, one of the best pollsters in the country, the one who got it right four years ago. He said, Trump's going to win Pennsylvania, but you have to allow five points for cheating. You know when the cheating is going to take place? From the third to whatever the date is that they gave. No, that's very disappointing. That was a very political decision, I have to say. They have not treated me well. Pennsylvania lost half of its manufacturing jobs to these calamities of sleepy Joe Biden. How do you like his new sunglasses? You like them? That's so you don't see the bad surgery on the eyes. No, they're terrible. Those sunglasses, they got to get a little, if you're going to use that kind, what are they, aviation, right? He's got to go at least one or two sizes larger that don't look good. I don't like this. I don't, he's got the silver deal going, the whole deal. And he's very angry, right? You'd ever notice. 
You know what? The word is a different word. It's agitated. You know why he's agitated, right? Yes. Because he's got a problem. We've got a... Uh, uh, uh. And you just hope he can keep it going, but it's not going to go much longer. That's why Crazy Nancy was trying to get the 25th Amendment, so if he ever got in, we get him out. And then you have Kamala. That should never be your first woman. But, but based on the numbers, the way I look at them in Pennsylvania, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it too much, okay? And Florida. And Ohio and lots of others. North Carolina is looking pretty good. Did you see that? And this is no longer the fake suppression polls. You know, we had a thing. Wisconsin is great. And we won it last time. And we had a poll come out. I'm up one. Then I'm down one. Then I'm up one. Then I'm even. You know what this crazy <laughs> stuff. But it's, you know, it's within this area. I think we're doing much better than that. You know, I think, I think we're way ahead. You know, I mean, I don't know if I should be happy or sad. People say, I don't want to talk to you about it. Then they go vote for Trump, you know, and we end up winning by a lot. But that's what happened last time. They thought I was going to lose because everyone walking out, the exit polls, they'd walk out. Who are you voting for? None of your business. Everybody that said none of your business, they were Trump voters. <laughs> Remember, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, they said, Trump lost. Well, they forgot to say, you know, they had the largest numbers of, it's called something else, but I'm trying to be nice because there's so many young people here. It's not none of your business. It's a much better word. It's two words <laughs> that they say. But all those votes were votes for me. So they don't count them. So they said, oh, it looks like it's going to be a rough time for Trump. And they were happy as hell. And then the votes came in. It was, that was a brutal evening for a lot of anchors that were crying. I don't know how this could have happened. Yes, I'm an impartial anchor. I'm an impartial anchor. How did this happen? The tears are pouring. <laughs> At every turn, Biden twisted his knife into the backs of Pennsylvania workers. While Biden was giving China your jobs, his family was raking in millions of dollars from China. Millions and millions of dollars. If Biden wins, China wins. If Biden wins, China will own the U.S. Just remember that. And with me, it went just the opposite. I will tell you one thing. I could name many countries that would like me to lose. You know, they said that uh, Germany, that in Germany, and I have a heritage with Germany. I mean, they should like me, but they like Obama much better. They should like Obama. There's no way they can like me. I said, pay up. They don't pay their, they're delinquent in NATO. They owe us billions and billions of dollars. Obama never said pay up. I said, you got to pay up, otherwise we have to take our troops out. And then I hear that uh, they like him better. Well, they should. You know what? If they ever like me better, I'm not doing my job, okay? <laughs> when we win, America wins, and we're going to have winning like you've never seen before. In 2016, Pennsylvania voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. Is that okay, Pennsylvania? And you don't have to take my word for it, because on Biden's record of economic treachery, and I only do this for places I like a lot. Thank you. <laughs> They're going to get it started. I mean. Is there any place uh, we would rather be? I never said I oppose fracking. You, you said it on I, tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. I guarantee you, we're going to end home. fossil fuel. No more, no new fracking. I'd gradually move away from fracking. And I think it's critically important on day one that we end any fossil fuel leases on public lands. Oh, well, like, what about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. pipeline yes. infrastructure? And, pipeline. And, and, exactly. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. I have one final would question. Would you close it down falls. the oil industry? It falls. Or would you close it down falls. the oil industry? By the way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I will transition. That is a big In statement. terms of business, that's the biggest statement. Okay. Because basically what he's saying is he is going to destroy. 
the oil industry. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania? You know, we have to come together. That's why I'm running. I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. So vote! Vote! Visit iWill.com slash Ohio. God bless you. Uh, can somebody tell Joe, by the way, it's not a real website, and Joe, you're running for president, not senator, and by the way, that senator, the Mormon guy, is Mitt Romney, not some Mormon governor. Now, sadly, what we showed you, that's just from a couple of hours today, because every ch time that Joe actually leaves the basement bunker and stays out past 10 a.m., well, disaster ensues. Here's a quick reminder. Look, tomorrow is Super Star Tuesday, and I want to thank you all. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. If you agree with me, go to Joe 30330. We choose truth over facts. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone. Make sure the kids hear words. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Donald Trump does pose an excellent strength to this. The, it's not hypothetical. This is pretty serious. By the way, these are way beyond an occasional campaign gap, and I am beginning, well, I'm more than a little worried that this man could represent a clear and present danger to this country. He's obviously not capable of leading. He's been hiding the entire campaign, and the corrupt media mob is covering for him. Joe wants to be the president of the United States of America. That would be the toughest job in the world. And at times, Joe doesn't seem to remember that he's even running for president, or what state he's in, or what day of the week it is. Does anyone really believe that if elected, that Joe Biden will actually be in control of anything? What kind of country are we going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Trick or treat! Ooh, what do we have here? <laughs> spooky, 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 <laughs> creepy. <laughs> creepy Uncle Joe. Oh, it's funny. It's Joe. <clears throat> Come on, man. Candy's for the kids. Well, maybe he forgot. Wait a minute. You you look familiar. Who are you? Are we gonna let her get away with this? She took everything. Thank you. Well, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? A little truth to that. Nah, nah. Can't happen. We can't do that to our country. We can't do that to our country. If I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. And if I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and I fight harder than any president has ever fought for the people of this country. One of the most important issues of this election is law and order. You know very well in Pennsylvania what's going on. Joe Biden and his party have spent the entire year inciting violence and hatred against our great police officers. And remember this, it's all Democrat-run cities, radical left Democrats, Democrats. You look at what's going on, all Democrat-run cities. 
Republicans have no problems. Our cities are doing great. Uh, but it's all Democrats. This week, the city of Philadelphia, I know it well, was ransacked by mo violent mobs and Biden supporters. More than 50 great police officers were injured, and they weren't allowed to do their job. They were standing, yeah, great police. I know the police departments, everybody has endorsed me. Remember in the debate, I said, name one law enforcement agency or establishment, Joe, that endorsed you. He couldn't name one. Couldn't name one. Our opponents stand with the rioters. They stand with the anarchists. They stand with the looters. We stand with the heroes of law enforcement, okay? <laughs> Gotta let them do their job. I'm not just running against Sleepy Joe Biden. I'm running against the left-wing media, the big tech giants, these people back here, and the Washington swamp. I'm also running against some rhinos. We still got some of them left. They're on mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. They're just about gone, but uh, you don't want them to come back. The rhinos. The rhinos are worse than the angry, angry, sicko Democrats, the ones that have gone off the ledge. But you can save your country by voting in record numbers on Tuesday. You got to get out and vote. Look, again, it's the most important election. You got to get out and vote. The great red wave we talk about, right? Great red wave. And you can send a message that they will never forget. This election is a choice between a Biden depression, that's what you're going to have, or a Trump super boom. You're going to boom. You're going to boom. We were there. And even now, look, through all of this, uh, your 401ks, they had a little hiccup because, because, look, they think if you had a chance, it's a disaster. You watch. We're going to win. First of all, the first call I'm going to get are the people, the leaders in Iran. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Uh, China, they're dying to do something. They all want to talk. I don't want to talk to them. I said, we've got to get an election over with. And they have to take the chance. Can you imagine Iran, the worst deal, $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash. And they said, let's wait till after the election. I said, I agree with you. It's a choice between a Biden lockdown or a safe vaccine that ends the pandemic. And it's ending anyway. It's making the turn anyway. But we have the vaccines are coming, and they're coming soon. They're coming very, very soon. We're going to have an incredible economy next year. You know, last year was the best year that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has ever had. I could almost say it with every state. I could say it with any state. It was the best year. We had to close it down. We saved all those lives. And now we opened it. And I said Super V, right? I actually said V. Well, now I can say it's a Super V at 33.1, which you won't read about. We will mass distribute the vaccine in just a few short weeks. We have our military all set up. They do soldiers, greatest military in the world. We've totally rebuilt our military in three and a half years. The pandemic will quickly be eradicated and wipe out the China plague. We'll get rid of it once and for all. We're going to get rid of it. Look at what's happening in Europe, how bad that is. That's so terrible. And they'd always say, look at Europe, look at Europe. Well, they're not doing too well. And if you look at our numbers, our numbers are so incredible. And our economy went down much less, and it's come back much, much faster. Biden opposed the China travel ban. He opposed the Europe travel ban. I closed it very early. And he said, I shouldn't do it. Think of this. He shouldn't do it. He's xenophobic. I think he called me a racist, too, which I don't like. Look. He shouldn't do it. He's xenophobic. He's xenophobic. He was saying this two months later. Now he runs. He said, I should have closed it sooner. This guy, between the fracking and the ban and everything else, and he wants to delay the vaccine and impose a years-long lockdown. Nope, you got to open up. You got to open up. We know the disease. We're going to have all of the different things, including the therapeutics, which I think might be a cure, because something happened to me. I'll tell you what. Something happened. It might be a cure, but the ther they call it therapeutics. But what we've done, and what we've done in terms of mortality rates are incredible. And we're going to go over that. The Biden lockdown will result 
in the deaths of Americans from suicide, drug overdoses, deferred medical care, abuse. I mean, you can't do this. You got to open them up. The families have to, the families can't live like this any longer. You can't live like this any. We want to open up our country. Now, part of the reason they're doing it, a big part probably, is political. They want to keep it closed. New York, what's going on with my beautiful New York? I left, I left three and a half years ago. And what's happened to New York in terms of crime and all of the problems, it's like a ghost town. What's happened to our great New York, Chicago, what's happened to Chicago? Portland, look at that. We could solve Portland, they're anarchists. We love the anarchists because we can knock them out in about 20 minutes, okay? All the governor has to do, call governor, call. I've been saying to her, call governor, just call. Speak to him all the time. We'll come in, we'll take care of the problem. We were going into Seattle. We informed them we're going in, we're just going in. They took over a part of Seattle, can you believe this? They took over, this is the radical left. They took over a part. We said, we're going in. You know what happened? The night before, they held up their hands. They said, we're leaving now. Thank you very much. <laughs> we had no choice. Biden will imprison your people, your families in your house while letting rioters roam free and loot your streets and loot your store. Under Biden, there will be no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving. No Christmas, no Easter, no Fourth of July. There will be no future for our country. Other than that, he's going to do a great job. Now, the guy's a total disaster. Everything he's touched has been bad. He's a disaster. Biden will trap you in an endless nightmare of deadly lockdowns and layoffs. He wants to lock down. You know, the virus is coming back a little bit. Uh, let's close up our country. No, can't do that. We understand it. We understand we have to protect your elderly. We know exactly what to do. I'm delivering the great American comeback. This is going to be one of the greatest comebacks of all time. And the numbers are far better than we thought. The numbers, you heard the numbers, 33.1. And again, they don't talk about it. If this were Obama, if I was, they would say 33.1, he's the greatest president. Oh, he's so great. He's so great, he gave us 142 federal judges to fill. If I were in his, if I were a radical left or a liberal and a president left office and gave 142 federal judgeships, including Court of Appeals, for Donald Trump to fill, who has a very different philosophy, you're no longer a good president. Nobody mentions that. But we're going to have, by the time the end of our first term, just our first term, 300, approximately 300 federal judgeships and three Supreme Court justices. And Amy, everybody loves Amy. She just got onto the court. Just got on. Think of that. Three Supreme Court justices and think of that, 300. But I say thank you, President Obama, for allowing us to have 142, because that, you know, usually when a president leaves, zero. They're nuggets of gold. People want that. You know, it's such an important position. Nothing much more important. People say it's the most important thing a president can do. I would say the military maybe, but it's okay. They say it's the most important thing. We're going to have 300. I mean, think of it. It's never happened before. You know the job we've done? You are so lucky that I'm your president. So lucky. You are so lucky that we took this journey together, this wonderful, this beautiful journey together. You are so lucky. Pennsylvania, you are so lucky. You better get out and vote on Tuesday. Get out and vote. That's very good. Well. That's very nice, though. That's a chant that nobody's ever heard politically. That's really nice. We love you, and I love you, too. I do. I had an easy life before I did this. But you know what? I would never change it, because we have done more in the first three and a half years than any administration has ever done for our military, for so many different things. Yeah, but I appreciate it. But, you know, that's a chant. Nobody's ever heard that chant. Even these characters back there, there are a lot of them back there. 
But that's it, she had nobody's ever heard, we love you, we love you. I mean, two guys are back there, they look like they're from the uh, UFC, UFC, and they're crying when they're saying it. They haven't cried in 20 years. <laughs> they haven't cried since they were a baby, then maybe didn't even cry then, but they were crying. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. If you want a vaccine to kill the virus, a job to support your great family, and freedom to live your life, you must vote Republican. You have to vote Republican. So we're joined today by some warriors, and I really like them, and they've been incredible. Uh, Congressman Dan Muser. Dan, thank you, Dan. Great job you're doing. And Congressman Lloyd Smucker. My campaign state chairwoman, someone who's really good. Well, let me ask her, how are we doing, Bernie? Where's Bernie? How are we doing? <laughs> oh, Bernie, great. Bernie Comfort, great job you're doing. Right, wait, I mean, let me just hold that. I'll let you know about great job within a couple of days. Hopefully not much longer than that. And a man who I know, I tell you, he's just, you know, I grew up, I like the Yankees, I like the Mets, and this guy was some player, Mike Piazza. Mike, Mike, you look good, Mike. They could use you. This guy was great. His father was great. They were, man, he could hit. He was a natural hitter. He was just a natural born hitter and a great catcher, by the way. We forgot that, right? We forgot that. He was a great catcher and a great athlete, a great hitter. Thank you, Mike, it's an honor. Thank you, man. We have a lot of great champions that are on this campaign, tremendous champions. Brett Favre was there yesterday. I was in, yeah. I was in a place called Green Bay. They like him in Green Bay. And we love Mike. Thank you, Mike, very much. What an honor. For decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, and now we're finally rebuilding our nation. I think it's a... I think it's time. Biden is a hateful man. You can see it in the way he angrily shouts his speeches. Great agitation. He can never unite us because he spent five decades in Washington trying to divide us. For 47 years, Joe Biden betrayed black Americans and viciously attacked their communities. In 1994, and that crime bill, that horrible crime bill, he devastated black families, and they know that. And one of the things we're seeing from other states is he's not doing very well with African-American votes. They don't, they don't like him. I signed landmark criminal justice reform, and I announced a platinum plan which will create three million new jobs for black Americans and deliver school choice for every family in our country. And then he went around in 1994 and around that time and started calling young black people super predators, right? Super predators. And you can't do that. And they remember that. And that's why he's doing terribly with African Americans. He's doing very badly. He's trying to figure it out. I could say, Joe, I can figure it out for you, Joe. I achieved the most secure border in history. Our opponents want open borders, open borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. And by the way, the wall is almost complete. 400, 400 plus miles and will be complete very soon. And it's made a difference. We have the most secure southern border we've ever had by far. To protect our security, I suspended the entry of foreign, re and you know what this is all about. You've been seeing what's going on in France lately. It's been terrible, I called up. President Macron, and I extended our sympathies and best wishes, but they had terrible terrorist attacks over the last few days, and more than one. I suspended the entry of foreign refugees from terror-afflicted nations, if you don't mind. I don't think <laughs> Biden has pledged a staggering 700 percent increase in the manifesto that he agreed to with — I call it the manifesto, because that's what it is — with crazy Bernie Sanders. He's a crazy guy. Mike, this guy is one of the greatest losers, Bernie Sanders. He loses with Hillary, goes back to voting. 
He loses again. Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren. All she had to do, no. All she had to do is get out two weeks early. He would have won super. Old Bernie would have won everything. Similar ideology. Not a good one, but similar. But Bernie goes back, and he's supporting now Joe. I don't know. He's a great sport. He's a great loser. Mike wouldn't be doing that. Mike would be ripping people apart, wouldn't you, Mike? 700% increase. Think of that. He wants a seven. They've agreed to it. Not once. They've agreed to it with AOC plus three. You know what that is? AOC plus three. One of the three is Ilhan Omar. That's why we're going to win Minnesota. 700% increase in refugees from those violent terrorist hotspots all over Earth, including Syria, Somalia, and Yemen. No, thank you. Do I have your approval? Pennsylvania, do I have your approval? I think so. I think so. He vowed to terminate our travel bans on jihadist regions. In other words, come on in, everybody. Enjoy the United States. We love you very much. Biden will open the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. And I am keeping the terrorists the hell out of our country, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, we invested $2.5 trillion in the United States military, the biggest investment ever made. Our military was totally depleted when I took over, right? Totally I was depleted. Our planes were old, our jet fighters. They used to go to the desert, the graveyards, airplane graveyards, take parts out of old planes and bring them in. Now we have brand new F-35 fighter jets, and tankers, and submarines, and missiles, and rockets, and our nuclear has been fixed to a level that you wouldn't believe. And we have the super-duper missiles that go very quickly, right? We're very, very... Hypersonic, they call them, right? Hyperso hypersonic, they go rather quickly, seven times the speed of our fastest missile right now, the best in the world. We saved the Philly shipyard, and Biden shut it down. Biden shut it down. We also passed VA choice and VA accountability for our veterans. And we just got a 91% approval rating. And he's got a 91% approval rating as a great catcher. He might have higher than that. You might have. Hey, you might be 99%. We killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We took out the mass murderer of U.S. troops and many troops all over the world. Soleimani is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. Thank you, Lord. Here's $150 billion. Make a short-term deal. It's almost expired. If I didn't terminate it, it would have been it's getting close to expiring. Short-term deal, basically. You know, country. It's not like you're leasing a store. It's a country. Made a short-term deal. $150 billion and $1.8 billion in cash. You ever see $1.8 billion in cash? I recognize the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And presidents have wanted to do that for Many, many, many decades, and they never had the guts to do it. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. They've been working on that for 52 years. I did it in two hours. It took two hours. And instead of endless war, we are forging peace in the Middle East. You see what's happening? They're coming in. No blood in the sand. Did it the opposite way. I said, how have they done it? And they said, good. Let's do it the opposite way. Yeah. That's very nice. So I have been, I've been nominated for, now I hear it's four. Nominated, nominated. But you know, think of it. And not just the Middle East. So we had a case, we're making trade deals with Kosovo and Serbia. Kosovo, Serbia. They've been killing each other for decades. Just, they fight. That's what they do. They kill each other so many years. So we're doing one deal, another deal, and they come in and tell me they're doing a deal with Kosovo, a deal with Serbia. 
I said, wait a minute, they've been killing each other for decades and decades. I don't want to do the deal. Tell them I'm not doing the deal unless they make peace. They have to come in and make economic peace. They have to make peace. They don't have to kill each other. You know, I'm saving lives. You could say, what does that have to do with us? You know how long it took me? About three minutes. I said to my guys, I said, tell them I'm not, you know, they want to make a deal. They want to make, everyone wants to do with us. Everyone now, especially, but everyone wants to do with us. So I went to them, I said, no, tell them they got to stop killing each other. And good people, good here, good there, stop killing. And you know what? Within a short period of time, we made a deal, right? That way we were nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. That one took me about 15 minutes. We made a deal. And the leaders came into the Oval Office, and they were hugging and kissing, and they were so happy with each other. And I said, isn't that nice? So, you know, smart. You say, hey, we're making deals. Let's tell them they got to get along. And it was great. And a lot of people, we saved a lot of lives. And you know what? Cost us nothing. It didn't do anything. We're saving a lot of good people. Lives. So we had a little nominee, but they won't give them to you. Don't. They won't give them. They just probably talk. But I hear it's an extraordinarily left organization. But if they do, somebody said, you definitely deserve them. And that's true. I mean, I know when you, you know, Obama got one. Remember, he had no idea why. He got elected president. Like, immediately after his election, we have nominated him for a Peace Prize. And it was a massive story. Do you know when I got nominated? I got nominated for Peace in the Middle East, right? I said to my wife, you heard this story. I said, darling, I'm going to come home a little early tonight. I'm going to watch the news. We have big news today. I'm going to get the greatest publicity you've ever seen, darling. She said, what happened? I said, well, it's Peace in the Middle East. I got a Nobel Peace Prize nomination. This is going to be really something, darling. I turned on the fake news. They talked about a, a hurricane. <laughs> then they talked about uh, a couple of fires where they should manage their forests much better, and you wouldn't have to. You know, all you have to do is manage your forests. You won't have any fires, right? Then they talked about a couple of other things. Then they talked about this and that. And after about 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes, you know, it's a half an hour show. Free airways from the government, even though it's fake news. I don't know. We have to look at that, right? But think of it. Look, the cameras are shaking now. But, you know, so 15 minutes go by, no mention. Now, when Obama got his, for no reason, he still doesn't know why he got it. He's walking around, why did I get it? No, it was the biggest service. I remember it now. He was nominated. The guy didn't even do it. He just got to the office. So 15 minutes go by, there's nothing. It's a little embarrassing. You know, I have our great first lady there. I'm trying to show off. I got it. Right? Right? You understand that, Mike. It's a little embarrassing. Now we go into the second 15. She said, darling, I don't think they're going to mention it because they started talking about something like for kids, you know? Something kids should do in the spring. I said, I don't think they're going to mention it, darling. And then the next day or the next week, I got another one, another one. But this time, we didn't go back home to watch. Too busy. <laughs> so it's one of those things, right? I've done more in 47 months than Sleepy Joe Biden has done in 47 years. It's <laughs> A vote for Republicans is a vote for the American dream. And remember, Abraham Lincoln, the great Abraham Lincoln, was a Republican. Please remember that. Abraham Lincoln, over the last long period of time, we've done a job. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. And we will end our reliance on China. It's already started. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. Right? We will defend the right to life, free speech, religious liberty, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will defend your Second Amendment. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. That's what we're doing. Bring them all in. We will end surprise medical billing, which is a disaster. Require price transparency already signed, and that's bigger than health care. You watch. Already signed. January 1st, it goes into effect. Can you imagine? This goes into effect so hard to get, and we have Biden as a president. They'll say, what a job he's done. What a job he's done. And they go to him, sir, you've done a great job on transparency. He says, what is that? 
I did. I said to my people, you have to start at January 1st, start it. But because of statutory provisions, et cetera, it starts January 1st. Remember what I said, price transparency, bigger than health care. Well, you see what I'm talking about. Lower drug prices, even more than we already have, but it's going to be favored nations. We have the highest prices in the world, and we now will match the lowest prices in the world. And the drug companies hate me. They don't like me. Big Pharma is not a big fan of mine. They're spending more money on ads than Sleepy Joe. They want me out. They want me out. But uh, China wants me out. Iran wants me out. Germany wants me out. They all want me out. But here we are, right? Here we are. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. Remember that. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. That's where we're going. And NASA, again, is the great space center of the world. It was closed and in disrepair when I took over. Now it's the hottest place there is for space. And we get all these rich guys, right? We're getting all these guys, very rich guys. They love sending rockets up. I say, go ahead, you can use our property, pay us something. So they give us a little rent, and they pay, and they spend a lot of money, and those rockets are good. Elon, Bezos likes rockets. They all like rockets. I don't know what it is. I don't know. What about you? Would you like to send a rocket? You made a lot of money, huh? No. One or two rockets is all you could manage. Right? We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our school. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the people of Pennsylvania. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your boss. Come on, boss. And get out and vote. You got to get out and vote on Tuesday. Get out and vote. The red wave. On November 3rd, we must finish the job and drain the swamp once and for all. It's a vicious swamp. It's deeper and darker and worse, but we've done a hell of a job, and we're still here, and we're doing it, and it's driving them crazy. For generations, America's destiny was made, forged, and won in places like Bethlehem, Bristol, Allentown, Altoona, Scranton, and Reading, all names we all know for a long time. Our American ancestors gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country and to defend our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, settled a continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. And the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. <laughs> Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. <laughs> With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Pennsylvania, we have made America powerful again, our military. We have made America wealthy again. Look at what's going on. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Go out and vote. Thank you.